Hello everyone, so today we're going to be discussing a little bit of combinatorics, uh, linear and circular permutations and the fundamental principle of counting. So these are some of the most basic, the most elementary things that you will study when you study permutation, combination, PNC. But you can actually, you can actually see that uh, via the couple of examples that you're going to solve, which are the previous equations of the IQM. You actually see that even if you have a really rudimentary or a really basic understanding of permutation and combination, you're still able to easily solve the two problems, right? And, you know, historically, from the past couple of years in the IQM, combinatorics has been relatively easy. So, yeah, all you really need to know is uh, linear circular permutations and fundamental principles of counting. And even if you knew that on that given day, you would be able to solve the problems. So, yeah, let's begin how we can, uh, let's see how we can uh, wrap up those things. So, the two problems are problem number 11 from IQM in 2021 and problem number 15 from IQM in 2020. And uh, in this video, we're going to be learning about linear permutations, circular permutations, the fundamental principle of counting, book sessions for the IQM, and at the end, a similar but charging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we have two problems over here, but before uh, talking about that, of course, I'll have to discuss the fundamental principle of counting, right? The fundamental principle of counting is essentially where most people start their journey of uh, permutation combinations, combinatrix, essentially the base of combinatrix as a subject, you know? So when it comes to fundamental principles of counting, there are two fundamental principles. One is the addition principle, and the other one is the multiplication principle. So let's first discuss the addition principle. So let's say there are, um, let's say there are x ways uh, for an event A to occur, right? There are x ways for an event A to occur, and there are y ways for an event B to occur, right? X ways for event A to occur and y ways for event B to occur. The number of ways for x for a or b to occur is x plus y so whenever you hear this word or it means addition It's the addition principle you add them right for example for example if i have let's say two ways of going from let's say london to paris and let's say i have three ways of going from let's say rome to berlin right so and let's say let's define this as event a and this is event b so what is the number of ways from going to london to paris or rome to berlin it is 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So that is essentially the addition principle whenever you say or it is the addition principle the second is the multiplication principle okay second is the multiplication principle multiplication so let's say uh, there are x ways for event A to occur and let's say there are Y ways for event B to occur right let's say there are X ways for event A to occur and Y ways for event B to occur so the number of ways for X for let's say A and B to occur that will be X times Y just X Y so whenever you say and, whenever you say and, now it is multiplication. Just remember that it is multiplication. And is multiplication. So for example, let's say there are two ways of going from London to Paris and three ways of going from Rome to Berlin. So what are the number of ways of going to from going from London to Paris and from Rome to Berlin? It will be two times three is equal to six. So this is essentially the difference between the um, addition principle and the multiplication principle. Whenever you have and it will be multiplication whenever you have or it will be addition so these are the fundamental principles of counting now once you've done that let's discuss a little bit about linear permutations right so what are permutations permutations is an arrangement so if i say what are the number of uh, ways of arranging three alphabets a b c you can say that there is a b c there is a c b there is b a c there is b c a Right? There is CAB and there is CBA. There are six, right? So there are six ways of arranging three alphabets. 
the 63 action node is 3 factorial and in general the number of ways of arranging n uh, n objects is n factorial right given that they are distinct n distinct objects number of ways of arranging n distinct objects is n factorial this is called a linear permutation so for example if we have the numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 what are the number of ways of arranging them in a line so you have five gaps uh, and this will be actually five factorial another way to look at this is called as the gap method so I don't know what you call it. Uh, you can call it anything really. So in the first place, for example, you have these five uh, five numbers. I want to arrange them in five places. So in the first place over here, I have I can arrange five numbers. In the second place over here, I can arrange four numbers. In the third place over here, I can arrange three numbers. In the fourth place, I can arrange two numbers. And obviously, the fifth number comes here. So it is five into four into three into two into one via the multiplication principle. I have to put the first number and the second number and the third number and the fourth number and the last number which is 5 factorial is equal to 120 ways to arrange these 5 quantities. So that is linear permutation, right? Essentially, you need to remember the number of ways to arrange n objects in factorial. Now you come on to circular permutations, right? What are circular permutations? Circular is again arranging them on a circle. So for example, if you have n objects and you arrange them in a circle, so the number of ways to do them is actually n minus 1 factorial. It's not n factorial. And why? Because you see, if I have to, let's say, place four people, right? Now the first person, how many ways can I fit the first person? You might say it is four, but no, it's actually one. Because there's kind of this circular symmetry that is observed over here. So no matter if the person goes over here or over here or over here or over here, no matter where he goes, his relative position is going to be the same. If you look at it from above, if I look at this table from above, it's going to essentially look the same for me like or, or you can consider it like no matter if this guy, if this guy is sitting over here the view that he is getting of three empty spaces is the same right the view is getting is the same if he sits over here let's say the view that he will get is the same right so all of these four positions are actually symmetric right so these four positions over here they're actually symmetric so there is only essentially one way which you can put the first person if you put the first person over here then there are three remaining vacant spaces to put the second person let's say i put in here the third person is two spaces and the fourth person obviously one space so that is three into two that's six which is three factorial which is four minus one factorial so again if you have n people number of ways to arrange them is n minus one factorial now this is obviously contain, uh, considering the anti-clockwise arrangements and the clockwise arrangements are different if they are same it would be n minus one factorial by two right? if, if you consider the clockwise arrangement and the anti-clockwise arrangement to be the same However, um, uh, if they are different, as in the case of arranging people, because the people are distinct, right? Different people are distinct. So in that case, it would be simply n minus one factorial. So yeah, that was essentially a little bit of background behind this, the couple of problems. And uh, now let's move to them. So they're saying that the first problem, three couples sit for a photograph in two rows of three people. Each such that no couple is sitting in the same row next to each other or in the same column, one behind the other. How many such arrangements are possible? So what they're trying to say is, let's say we consider a <clears throat> two by three matrix or a two by three grid, right? Two rows and three columns. So for example, if I, let's say we have uh, three couples, let's say we have M1, M2, M3, and correspondingly we have F1, F2, F3. So M1, F1, M2, F2, and M3, F3 are the three couples. Now, if I place M1 over here, F1 cannot go in these two places. Right? It cannot be like in the same row or in the same column adjacent to M1. That is essentially the condition that we need to satisfy. Right? So how do we go about this? Now, see, I have six places. I can put M1. Let's say I chose to put M1 first. I have six places to put M1. Right? Let's say I put M1 over here. Right? And, and I will put someone else. So it's obviously multiplication principle. So F1 cannot go over here, over here and over here. So F1 can only go in one of these two places. F1 has two slots. Let's say F1 goes over here, right? Now I have four spaces and I have four people. I don't care which person you take. I'm going to take, let's say M2 and I place M2 over here and M2 had four spaces to go over here. Now, can F2 go over here? No. Can F2 go over here? No. So F2 has to go over here. There's only one place for F2 to go. And then here is left. So here we can have either M3, F3 or we can have F3, M3. There are two ways of kind of doing this. So the total number of ways would be 6 into 2 into 4 into 2, which is 12 times 8, which is 96, which is our correct answer. So like you saw, you really didn't need a lot. Just, just multiplication principle. You literally, for this question, didn't need anything else other than multiplication principle. 
right it was that trivial now coming on to the next one in how many ways can four married couples sit in a merry go round with identical seats so the men and women occupy alternate seats and no husband sits next to his wife now believe it or not this is actually the 11th question in the iqm and total questions were 12 so this was like relatively a hard question given that exam it was quite simple and this was for a 5 marker and you can actually see how easily you can actually score a 5 marker let's just read this question one more time in how many ways can four married couples sit in the merry go round with identical seats such identical seats that's kind of important so that men and women occupy alternate seats and no husband sits next to his wife so merry go round is circular right so this is circular and um, again i'm going to assume the couples as m1 m2 m3 m4 corresponding with f1 f2 f3 and f4 and obviously men and women have to sit alternate positions so let's say i consider this one arrangement where this m1 is here m2 is here m3 is here and m4 is here now obviously where can f1 go now now okay let's first consider what are the number of ways of arranging this there will be 4 minus 1 factorial right 4 minus 1 factorial ways of arranging these four males now the female have to win alternate spots now note that in the question that they have given us that the couple cannot be alternate so the the female one cannot go over here or here the, she has to go over here or here so the number of ways of doing that is 2 now let's say female one goes over here right if female one goes over here right where can female 2 go right where can female 2 go how many like how many ways can female 2 go so female 2 can either go here and then female 3 automatically goes over here and if you actually look at this the only way why because here female 3 cannot go <laughs> Here, female three cannot go because then this M three and F three will be adjacent to another, which is what we don't want. So the only possible way if F one is here is this, right? Similarly, similarly, if I can just is this. Similarly, if I put F one over here, automatically the others are arranged. Now I cannot put F two over here or here. F two has to go here, right? That makes sense. Can F three go over here? No, F three has to go over here and F four has to go over here. So no matter where I put, it's gonna kind of fix the uh, arrangement of the others, right? So there is only one way of doing that. So essentially, this becomes three factorial into two. Three factorial is six into two, which is twelve. So again, very simple question of circular permutation for five marks can be easily done in sixty seconds if you kind of get get the hang of it. So yeah, a uh, couple of problems uh, relatively easy, and uh, yeah, it was really interesting actually. Uh, how how this is I think the beauty of mathematics. Elementary ideas can. Uh, Get you some good marks in competitive um, Olympiads. So moving forward, we have certain book sessions for the IQM, Challenges in Theory of Pre-College Mathematics, Mathematical Circles, Excursion Mathematics, a Test of Mathematics at 10 plus 2 level, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Elementary Theory of Numbers by Sierpinski, Principles and Techniques in Combinatorics, and of course, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Shell. Okay, so we have some similar but challenging problem. Uh, six chairs are evenly spaced around the circular table. Okay. One person is seated in each chair, right? Each person gets up and sits down in a chair that is not the same and is not adjacent to the chair he originally occupied. So that again, one person is seated in each chair. How many ways can this be? So what they're essentially trying to say is, let's say we have um, six chairs around the circular table. Let's say, and they're evenly spaced. So let's say they are these six chairs. And for example, if a person was sitting over here, he got up. and when he comes down to sit he cannot go over here he cannot go over here and can can he cannot go over here right so he essentially can only go in three three chairs so they're asking in how many ways can this be done so again little bit of circle permutation the multiplication principle and that would be good enough for this so if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it let me know in the comment section below and until then i'll see you in the next video thank you very much the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com